Hello there, YouTube. This is going to be uh, something of a, a brief thoughts of no one in particular, because um, it's <laughs> it's just incredibly stupid. I got a comment on my um, page, uh, channel comments, which are annoying because of the fact that no nobody gets. I don't get any notification that these channel comments exist until I manually check them. Um, so I didn't realize this was there for a while, but essentially the, the, there's two in particular. One I won't mention too much because he's an idiot, um, but the other was um, your left-wing beliefs are pushing you toward hell. Yes, so apparently left-wing politics is now satanic. Believing in such um, classic um, satanic um, doctrines such as love thy neighbour, such as um, give up your money and follow me, the love of money is the root of all evil, and um, judge not yes ye be judged, all said by that famous Satanist, Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, wait. Yes. Um, this is something that, that just um, completely baffles even um, socially conservative Christians in this country. Just do not get how you can support uh, fiscal, fiscally conservative ideas and still call yourself a Christian. Because of the fact that um yeah you're you, you're completely contradicting yourself the politics of the right as far as fiscal conservatism is concerned is the politics of selfishness and in fact the main proponent of said um Ayn, Ayn Rand pretty much flat out said that and uh what I find even funnier uh, thank you, the Christian left, for this. But this is this this is this is the real um, this is the real real um, nail in the coffin here. Uh, Anton Levey, the founder of the uh, somewhat trollish um, Church of Satan in Los Angeles, famously said, um, "This is the political philosophy of Ayn, Ayn Rand, with a bit of religious symbolism thrown in." That was an actual quote. He said that. Um, he, admittedly, his his form of um, Satanism is somewhat misinterpreted, and it is very much in the line of the sort of Hellfire Club idea of basically objection to sort of dogmatism, which, funnily enough, is exactly what Jesus Christ was all about: objecting to dogmatism and the legalism, and just generally um, people be. Pe um, people being hypocrites um, so he's not quite like some of the others involved um, within uh, within that sort of area who actually do believe that they are following the devil um, this guy was a very very clever sort of troll of religion uh, in the in the in the mould of the Hellfire Club. Now, I'll explain a little about the Hellfire Club. I um, believe I mentioned them briefly in a um, in my latest book. Um, the Hellfire Club was a group of nobles um, who, in Georgian England, so that's um, 17th century, sorry, 18th century England, um, they they had this, well they set up in the 17th century, went through the 18th. Basically they were people who were so rich that they, um, and so bored with how um, Christianity was sort of pushing them towards being nice people, um, and sort of donating the money to the book. They just got so fed up with it that they decided to make a, a little club. Most of them still went to church and still sort of, at least on the surface, appeared appeared either liberal Christian or agnostic. 
very few of them actually outright atheists, but they got together in this little club, and it was called the Hellfire Club, um, and they just had these these parody rituals. They were, um, I believe, the um, drinks and refreshments were served um, by waitresses who, by their contract, had to be naked, um, and. It, it was just a general um, stupid uh, s stupid little uh, trolling of religion, really. It, it, it was there for these rich bastards to celebrate the fact that they were essentially above the law and they could do what the hell they wanted. Uh, and believe me, they, some, of the, uh, some of the comments made about the Hellfire Club and their activities I have no doubt some some points they may well have got away with murder because they were all that well connected, and um, they they will they, they were all that well powerful. And also another funny thing about that when you talk about the American right, among the uh, life members of the Hellfire Club were the following: Adam Smith, the um, founder of what we now call capitalism, the basically the guy who invented um, modern-day capitalism. Uh, his grave is in Edinburgh, and um, when I visited Edinburgh, I was told that when he was buried in the uh, nonconformist side part of the graveyard, there are a big bunch of um, Presbyterian Church of Scotland people camped around his grave expecting the devil to turn up in person to pick him up. He was that malicious and nasty. Um, to them at least. So that that was that was their their expectation. They were sadly disappointed, but I'm sure uh, <laughs> I'm sure he I'm sure he had better things to do. But <laughs> no. Um, so Smith was a um, outright atheist and lifelong member. Other members include Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers. Several other founding fathers um, are also mentioned in their, although their membership is not necessarily um, as sort of, sort of definite as Franklin's membership. And generally, you, I just I just find this extremely funny. Um, funny in a sickening kind of way, but that's how I find a lot of things. Uh, but the American right going on about its uh, sort of um, family values and its its um, belief in a thing, it just makes no sense. And it is being exported, this this makes no sense, because we have with Nadine Doris, who calls herself a libertarian, at the same time calls herself a Christian, same time, um, yeah, she, she's she's a mess. She's called the British Sarah Palin, and with good reason. Um, but yeah, so essentially, it's the whole basis of the American right is around a contradiction, a contradiction that they are um, they they're following these these ideologues. I won't call them religious figures. <laughs> They're following these ideologues um, like Rand, LaVey and all these others without realising it. Without realizing, well, not realising what they're doing. And that is directly contradicting uh, Christian principle. And I do believe um, there's, well, the vast majority of the sort of socialist movements in the UK have been very Christian based. Even in recent times, um, because there was a there was a film that was made um, about the SAS, and they needed a um, terrorist group. Originally, they were going to have a Middle Eastern terrorist group, but then the Iranian embassy siege happened, so they made them a homegrown left wing group. And this left wing group's rally was led by a priest. And that's for good reason, because the first sort of major sort of socialist revolution in this country, the Peasants' Revolt, was also led by a priest who famously said, um, so, 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 when Adam toiled and Eve spun, who then was the gentleman? Um, 
again with our civil war, although Cromwell became a theocratic dictator, at the start he famously said, no, no one but Christ is king. Uh, yes, I do realise that uh, a certain um, wingnut uh, wrote that to me, um, and he did correctly quote that quote, only he said it was on Cromwell's tomb. Cromwell doesn't have a tomb. Cromwell um, was, well, he did have a tomb. It was in his parish church, um, I think Somerset somewhere, and it was a little sort of vault. It wasn't anything spectacular. It was broken into by the forces of Charles II. His dead body was then put on trial. Yes, that's what Charlie Boy was like. And executed. Yes, he executed a dead body in the manner with the, the hanging, drawn and quartering where they sent them all bits of the body all around the country. I believe we recently lost... Or I think we found his head again. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I haven't really been keeping up with archaeology, but... Um, his head vanished in the 1930s, reappeared in the 70s, vanished again. Generally trying to find Cromwell's head is one of the uh, the major uh, things I think, when it comes to sort of storing um, historical artefacts at the moment. Uh, for some reason we keep losing track of it. Um, but um, I got on a, on a tangent there. But essentially to use Christianity in concordance with a sort of a, well, what Americans call libertarian doctrine, is just completely stupid. Incredibly stupid. I mean, I words escape me as to how stupid it is. This guy, as TYT constantly says, was the original communist. Um and omittedly later on said revolution did eat its children and um, a legalistic uh, Pharisee called Paul um, hijacked the movement and did exactly what Jesus said don't do all the time and still people followed him I, I don't have much respect for that guy he, he was a very very bad example of what a Christian should be but, um, yeah, you, you're basing your... Uh, I, I've already talked about um, the fallacy of basing your sort of social conservatism on uh, Christianity. And there are some who would say in this country, there's a minority, I'd say, that, that would have some kind of socially, social conservative ideas. Um, mostly from mostly from sort of uh, the more um, either very sort of middle class regions or um, or various uh, sort of um, immigrant churches that are popping up um, more than the sort of Church of England itself which is particularly liberal um, as a whole and it was based it was based on a compromise so frankly uh, how you can hold a conservative position in it is <laughs> somewhat um, stupid but uh, nonetheless um, they have these they, they will not be phys fiscally conservative they will never be that um, we, conservative or liberal all of our archbishops have condemned pretty much every war we've been in since World War two all of our archbishops have uh, condemned cuts to public services, have condemned the um, attacks on the poor, disabled, the sick, by the government and by the media in general. Um, and to that end, even ideologues like Sentimu and uh, the current Bishop of London, who I've forgotten his name, I met him, but I can't remember his name, they may be very strongly opinioned on their on um, homosexuality, but when it comes to when it comes to um, the sort of proper um, practice of a Christian minister, they will call out anybody uh, who doesn't fit there as they see the Christian responsibility to look out for the weak and look out for the for the humble. Um, 
and that is that is their that is to their credit really anyhow um i hope you found this entertaining um do um check out the rest of my um book